A steam plant using a castle steam boiler, part 4. Fitting the hand pump with a 90 degree water inlet union. In this clip I'm removing the original inlet union to show you what's inside. And as you can clearly see, this is one of the ball valves made from stainless steel. Pumps like this have a stainless steel ball on the inlet and another one on the outlet. That's how they work. As you move the lever and pull the ram out of the cylinder, the bottom ball lifts and water is sucked into the cylinder. Then when you move the lever the other way, the bottom ball seals with the pressure, the top ball lifts and water is forced out of the top of the pump where it's connected to a check valve on the boiler. I need to fit a right angled union and then to this union I'm going to connect a water pipe. Most of the time I would use an old check valve. I'd remove the ball from the check valve and fit that as a right angled union. So why am I not doing that now? Well, I don't have any 5 16ths by 32 check valves in stock at the moment. I'm going to use a commercial elbow. This is a 5 16ths by 32 threads per inch elbow, available from Blackgate's Engineering. Blackgate's address is on screen at the moment. These excellent pumps and fittings are made by Chris English at CME Engineering, and personally, I don't use any other type. In this clip, I'm fitting the original union and I need to join the elbow to this, a very simple job. I could flatten off one end of the elbow and use that as the seat for the ball, but I'd rather do it this way. All I need to do is trim a little bit off both the fitting in the pump and the elbow, as well as extending the thread on the elbow to go further down. This was very easy to do, I just fitted the elbow into a tailstock die holder, then using a spanner on the elbow, I rotated it into the die holder, cutting the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread a little bit longer. Then using my belt sander, I simply ground off the tapered part of both the fitting in the pump and the elbow. Over to the lathe now, and here I'm using my micrometer on a 3 8 of an inch diameter drill bit. I do this very frequently because it's quicker than peering at the graduations on the handle. My eyesight is not what it once was. The twist drills are generally not the right size, they're usually a bit smaller, but all I have to do then is set the micrometer to the correct number. And now it's time to turn down a piece of scrap brass to 3 8 of an inch in diameter. There's already a hole in the end of this piece of brass and it's not 100%, but it's near enough for this component that I'm going to make, which is just a threaded sleeve. Now I'm drilling the part, tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch and as you can see the wall of the adapter is very thin. This is not a highly stressed component. Normally I would not thread a piece of 3 8 bar 5 16 by 32 down the centre. It's going to be strong enough for what I need but only just. In case you're wondering why the image is moving around that's because my lathe is not bolted to the floor and it's moving as I rotate the chuck by hand. Not good practice, but it's okay for this job. Here's the finished thread, and it should be okay. I think the metal is just thick enough for this. Time now to part off the bit that I want. So I take a fine cut like this, then I use a file to get rid of the sharp edge before continuing the parting off until it drops off. And this doesn't take very long. I'm not using any cutting lubricant because brass parts off very easily. I always use this stuff, Loctite 542, whenever I'm making steam or water connections. This is not a retainer, so you can unscrew the parts quite easily. First of all, I apply some to the pump union and then screw on my adapter that I made. Then I apply some more Loctite 542 to the thread on the elbow. I screw part A into part B and tighten it up with a spanner. I trim the elbow to make it so that when it's fully tightened, both the elbow and the adapter that's in the pump are touching each other. It's most important that this adapter doesn't drop down below the block that I made to mount the pump, and as you can see, it's fine. Now I'm going to remove the paint from both the pump and the elbow, and for this I'm using standard thinner. And before using this stuff, it's very important to read the instructions, a bit of health and safety. Now I have a polythene tub into which I'm pouring the cellulose thinner. And why is it green? Well, this is cellulose thinner that I've used before for removing paint, obviously green paint. 
I propped the tub up in the outer part of the workshop so that the pump was fully submerged and just left it for a couple of hours. And it really doesn't take long until all of the paint falls off the metal. Now it's fun time. This is a fabricated silver soldered construction and the marks you can see are from the flux when it was silver soldered so I have to clean all of this off. I'm using Scotch Bright for starters. It's a simple enough job and after a while what's left of the flux residue comes off quite easily. Because of the complex shape of this pump I can't get into every nook and cranny. So here's a top tip. Use an old rag, clamp it in the vise and rub the part up and down on the rag. And this works very well, especially if you tip some tea cut onto the rag first. Unfortunately though, I ran out of tea cut a while back. But even without the tea cut, the pump is looking okay. I managed to get it this shiny using Scotch Bright, my polishing spindle and the cloth method that I've just shown. I'm going to loosely fit it to the base to see what it looks like. And it's not bad. I'm definitely going to paint the base the same colour as the engine. But I think for some variety I'll leave the pump in natural brass. I may change my mind on this but time will tell. And that's it for this episode. I'd just like to say as I always do, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.